RC circuits transient response. So RC, it's resistor connected with a capacitor. So here we're considering a resistor connected in series with a capacitor and that's connected to a battery uh, at some point. So uh, the capacitor is initially uncharged and when the switch is uh, moved to point A, basically it will start charging as a current will flow through the circuit. Uh, now, if I write Kirchhoff voltage law uh, starting at um, this point here, so let's say that I start at this point and end at this point, th this is going to be IR minus epsilon plus uh, BC, the voltage across the capacitor, equals to zero. Since the current is flowing in this direction, this should be the direction of voltage drop. Okay, so writing Kirchhoff voltage law, we have IR minus epsilon, the electromotive force of the battery, we're neglecting the internal resistance of the battery here, plus VC, is equal to zero. This is our Kirchhoff voltage law and the voltage across the capacitor is the charge stored divided by the capacitance C. So it's initially zero because the capacitor was initially uncharged. So in time we have I times R so let me replace this i with uh, lowercase i here to denote that it has time dependence. So this is i times r minus epsilon plus q over c is equal to zero. And this current i, which is time dependent here, is dq dt. Uh, the rate of uh, charge flow. So if I substitute dq dt for i, I obtain r dq dt minus epsilon plus q divided by c is equal to zero. This is a differential equation that contains only one variable, time-dependent variable, that is charge. So if you isolate dq dt, we see that dq dt is epsilon divided by r minus q over rc. All right. So now it's our job to solve this differential equation to find the charge as a function of time and then taking its derivative with respect to time, we will find the current as a function of time. So uh, if I rewrite this differential equation as dq dt is equal to, uh, with a minus sign here, Q minus C epsilon. So it was C epsilon minus Q, but it's Q minus C epsilon divided by RC. So what I have done here is I have multiplied top and bottom with uh, C. So this is C epsilon divided by RC minus Q, but with this minus sign here, it's Q minus C epsilon divided by RC. So if I take the charges to the left hand side, then I have dq divided by q minus c epsilon and the time to the right hand side I have minus dt divided by rc. Now I'm going to integrate this integrate both sides from time t equals zero to time t. Therefore, I need dummy variables here. So I will change this time to t prime 
charge to Q prime so that we have charging from zero to charge Q and we're going from time t equals zero to time t. Okay, and uh, what is the integral of one over Q prime minus C epsilon d Q prime? It is natural logarithm of Q prime minus C epsilon. This which will be evaluated between zero charge to charge Q. And on the right hand side, I have integral of dt prime that is t minus uh, t over rc evaluated between 0 and t. It is uh, t over rc. So it's minus t prime over rc, but evaluated between 0 and t. It is minus t over rc. So this gives me natural logarithm. If I put this limit here, it's q minus c epsilon, q minus c epsilon, minus natural logarithm minus c epsilon is equal to natural logarithm uh, we have c epsilon minus q divided by c epsilon so this is q minus c epsilon divided by minus c epsilon. So if I multiply top and bottom with minus 1, I obtain c epsilon minus q over c epsilon. So this is uh, the result of the integration. So natural logarithm of c epsilon minus q over c epsilon is equal to minus t over rc gives us c epsilon minus q is equal to c epsilon times e to the minus t over rc and the answer for charge as a function of time q of t is then c epsilon parentheses 1 minus e to the minus t over rc. Okay, so you can see that uh, if I call the total charge that will develop on the capacitor to be c epsilon, q is equal to c epsilon, I can write this answer as q of t is equal to the final charge q 1 minus e to the minus t over rc and I note that at t is equal to 0 I will have e to the 0 which is 1 1 minus 1 0 the capacitor is initially uncharged so that is solving for charge as a function of time my answer for uh, Q of T. Okay. Now I can also solve the current as a function of time. I of T. I of T is dQ dt. And I should note here that Q is equal to C epsilon. Uh, dQ dt will give me uh, minus c epsilon that is minus q divided by uh, minus rc e to the minus t over rc so basically the derivative with respect to time for this one is minus 1 over rc but we have a minus sign here so this will become plus c epsilon is q so it's c epsilon over rc e to the minus t over rc or i of t we find to be because the C's will cancel here and the minus signs will disappear. So we will be left with epsilon divided by R e to the minus T over R C. So this is telling us that at T is equal to zero, 
the value of the current is epsilon over r uh, and also the voltage across the capacitor at t is equal to zero was zero so uh, as time goes by you can see that the current will drop now this rc factor here that appears uh, which has a unit of time is a time constant it's the time it takes for the current to drop to 1 over e of its initial value uh, so you can see that at t is equal to rc i will have e to the minus one factor here if you look at the dimension of rc dimension of resistance times capacitance it's the dimension of Resistance is according to Ohm's law, delta V over I, and capacitance is the charge divided by uh, delta V. So C is equal to uh, delta Q over delta V. It's the amount of charge we can store uh, in the capacitor for a given voltage application. So we obtain Q over I. Now, dimension-wise, this is uh, the charge Q divided by Q over time, that is current, dQ dt, remember. So this is Q divided by time t. So this has the dimension of time as expected. Now, if I plot uh, these answers here, you can see that the charge is initially zero. Now it's charging as uh, time goes by when tau is equal to rc, it approaches 0.632 C epsilon. And C epsilon is the asymptotic limit here as t goes to infinity. So the charge approaches its maximum value C epsilon as t approaches infinity. And the current, which is initially epsilon over r because Vc was equal to zero, drops exponentially in time. 0.368i, uh, 36.8 of its initial value is reached at time t is equal to tau. So this is basically how the charging process for the capacitor works. So in summary, we talked about a capacitor that was initially uncharged connected to a resistor and a battery in series. We write Kirchhoff voltage law in this circuit uh, for time-dependent variables, we use uh, lowercase letters. So this is I. Uh, so maybe the, for this voltage even, we should write uh, lowercase v. This is Vc. Uh, so Vc is equal to Q over C. Uh, and Kirchhoff voltage law tells us that this is the voltage drop across the resistor IR minus epsilon plus VC is equal to zero. So this is our time dependent capacitor voltage. And uh, for I, we write dQ dt. For the voltage across the capacitor, we write Q over C and solve this differential equation. And solving it finally gives us a uh, a charge which was initially zero and it approaches asymptotically to a value c times epsilon and current which was initially epsilon over r because the initial voltage vc is zero it's going to be epsilon over r e to the minus t over tau and tau is called time constant and indeed we have verified that its dimension is t uh, and it basically tells us when the current drops to 1 over E of its initial value. Now, in principle, we can also talk about the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, Vc of t. But this is very simple, right? So this will be Q divided by C. So all we have to do here is write C epsilon divided by C. So it's going to be epsilon 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. So that's the time dependence of the voltage across the capacitor.